Welcome back to World Crisis Radio. Just concerning the uh, the bankruptcy, the failure of large parts of the foundation-funded peace movement, who are, of course, committed to supporting Butcher Barkey, to supporting Obama, no matter what he does, because he is, of course, the charismatic Messiah, the anointed one, as we know. In other words, the lemming legions, the drooling Obama cultists, the Kool-Aid drinkers, uh, this is concentrated very heavily in foundation-funded peace organizations. Remember, Obama's mother comes from the Ford Foundation. That's the family business. Obama's only employment other than government was foundations. He was a strike breaker, a community organizer, a poverty pimp for the Gamaliel Foundation, the Joyce Foundation, the Woods Fund, the Annenberg Foundation, his friends, Ayers and Dorn, heavily funded by the Annenberg Foundation, the MacArthur Foundation, and so forth. So this is an entire milieu of foundation-funded operatives, provocateurs, agents, mind-benders, uh, machines of social uh, manipulation, social engineering, and so forth. So it's not surprising when you look at the, the um, overwhelming foundation funding into the peace movement that so many of these groups have uh, have done nothing. Now, interesting article, John V. Walsh, you can see this at uh, anti-war, anti-war ignored Cindy, and then they decided anti-war tried to jump on the Cindy Sheehan bandwagon trying to do fundraising for themselves using her picture, but the money was not going to go to her. It was going to go to anti-war. How about that for uh, chutzpah? Uh, this article, however, by John V. Walsh, originally from Counterpunch, I believe, gold is where you find it, she says the silence is deafening. Uh, the silence of the, uh, of the anti-war movement is deafening, and after Cindy Sheehan had put down her call to come to Martha's Vineyard and protest the new warmonger as vigorously as you protested the previous warmonger from Crawford, Texas, to Martha's Vineyard, so who did not show up? The Nation magazine. Oh, Catherine Vanden Heuvel, daughter of the uh, secretary to Wild Bill Donovan of the OSS. The American Friends Service Committee. Where are you? Peace, Na Peace Action. Where are you? Progressive Democrats of America. Where are you? Code Pink. Where are you? They're doing Honduras, as we've seen. They think Honduras is the key to the world situation. You've got to pick between those two dictators, and uh, if you pick wrong, then you, get, uh, you don't get the prize. United for Peace and Justice, according to John V. Walsh, one of the largest of these groups, is essentially liquidating itself, shutting down, closing shop. Their contributors are gone, meaning their foundation funding, shriveling up following the thinly veiled protest of the retirement of Leslie Kagan, who had been the resident honcho at United for Peace and Justice. I think this means that she's quitting in protest to what's going on. And, of course, George Soros's own MoveOn.org, which was always against the Iraq War and in favor of the Iraq War. So... This is an epiphany. You can see who's who. Who's honest? Who is trustworthy? Who is believable? Who is corrupt? Who is a hypocrite? Who is a shill for the foundations and for Butcher Barkey? Walsh also adds that he called in the uh, New England area, American Friends Service Committee, Peace Action, Green Party of Massachusetts, alias Green Rainbow Party, and they did not even respond. Now, again, anti-war piled on, I think, later, a little bit opportunistically. That's fine. Let them do it. Uh, any reason to protest is a good reason. And in terms of the, um, the support, there are honest groups. There are people whose names deserve to be recorded as, uh, as actually interested in peace, not just chills of the Democratic Party. It would be Iraq veterans against the war and world can't wait. Those groups are actively supporting what Cindy Sheehan is doing this weekend. So, again, Obama saw the protest. Remember, Obama's great vulnerability is to attacks coming from his left, attacks coming from the Limbaugh, Hannity, O'Reilly, Newt Gingrich uh, axis, the, the Austrian school, Friedmanite axis, uh, are not effective against Obama uh, or have limited effect because they tend to reinforce the one thing that he needs, which is left cover. If he's getting attacked by peace activists coming from his left, 
This hurts Obama more than anything. And indeed, we'll see in just a minute that he has had to start shucking. He's throwing sops to the anti-war movement. I would say it is no coincidence that just as the public support for the Afghan lunatic adventure collapses, just as the military situation, political situation deteriorates, and above all, just when Cindy Sheehan and the anti-war people show up at Martha's Vineyard, we have Holder, Eric Holder, the corrupt and highly politicized uh, Obama uh, associate, the, the uh, attorney general, Holder says he's going to appoint a special prosecutor to probe not Bush, not Cheney, not you, not Ashcroft, not Gonzalez, not uh, not Addington, not any of these neocon monsters who ordered torture. He's going to go after some little fish in the lower lower echelons of the CIA. Notice it's only the CIA. How about the Army uh, holder? You know, your your man McChrystal, your new commander in Afghanistan, is the guy who set up the network of torture chambers in Iraq. So McChrystal gets off with no problems whatever. It's only the CIA and only the little fish. What is that? We've seen that before. That's a shock. That's a sop. That's saying to the anti-war movement, look, I'm not as bad as you think. Look what I'm doing. I'm giving you this wonderful uh, special prosecutor. It's a shock and a sop to placate the left libs and to attempt to solidify Obama's collapsing left flank because he does something for this group. Remember, when the LGTB people wanted same-sex marriage rights, uh, and uh, Obama was denying it. They threatened not to go to his fundraiser, and he immediately made a concession in their direction. All of you anti-war people and leftists out there, learn the lesson. You don't get anything from Obama by being nice to him. You've got to get very rough. You've got to attack him mercilessly, expose his crimes, his hypocrisy, his Wall Street control, and at the very least, you'll get some small concessions, and that may hopefully encourage you to go on and do bigger and better things, because it shows that he really is vulnerable to attacks coming from the left. So don't be nice, be very rough, and you will get somewhere. Now, let's turn to economics. Um, it is very, very grim, and I, I get the feeling now we're going into a new downturn, and I, what I principally mean is the downturn has not uh, is accelerating in terms of the real economy, but even the projection of that into the dizzy realm of stock market speculation. I think this, this uh, mugs rally uh, now reaching the outer limits. Um, what, what are the, the statistics? According to shadow government statistics, the U.S. now has 21 percent unemployed. That starts with an official rate of 9.5%. If you go up to, uh, I think it's called U6 of the Labor Department, which is unemployed, underemployed, and presumably um, people who uh, uh, are um, in the gray area between looking for a job and not, it gets up to 16%. And if you add in others who have dropped out before, uh, according to shadow government statistics, it's 206 I believe, so we'll round that up. 21% unemployment. That is a world economic depression, world trade collapsing. It's also the first time since 1947 that the United States has had a shrinking economy for four quarters, for one entire year. That is to say, you've got to go back to the primary post-World War II demobilization depression of 1947 to find four quarters of down, fourth quarter 08 minus 5.4 percent, first first quarter 09 minus 6.4 percent, second quarter 09 minus 1 percent. We'll be back in a minute. 